exciting times. It's dip net season. I got the camper all loaded up, the side-by-sides loaded up. I'm super excited. I have about a five hour drive tonight and I'm starting late. It's five o'clock. Probably won't be there till about 10, set up the RV. Super excited, stay tuned. It's a 11.35 at night. Finally got pulled into camp here. Got the RV all set up. Got the pop out out. And uh, dip net season opens tomorrow at noon. So hopefully I can get a little bit of sleep tonight and I'll go get after it tomorrow. Ready to dip net, babe? Yep. All right, we're all loaded up. Jason's riding in the back. We got dip nets back here somewhere. Yep, we got dip nets, we got a drone there, we got our cameras ready, and we're off to dip net. See you out on the river. These are remnants of the old railroad tracks that used to lead from Chitna, Alaska down to the Copper River and it was uh, for an old copper mine. The copper mine is still open, uh, not operating, but you can still access the mine itself. It's not a closed mine if you can get down the trail, which is pretty rugged, but pretty cool to see the old remnants of history here. Copper River. I believe this was an old uh, railroad building that's been here for many, many, many years. Just another piece of history sitting here.
seat. about the gear we're using so we're using a this is a three foot hoop with a four foot net bag it's attached to two six foot sections of pole with a T handle at the end so I can disassemble everything the handle comes off there at the end then this section here a pipe breaks down and then of course the net comes down I bolt the net on it's at, uh, a lot of times just in case just a safety feature but that's what we're using. I prefer a three foot hoop. You can use bigger hoops, um, but in this current, as you can see, the current on this river is pretty substantial. And when you stick that down in there, that four foot net grabs a lot of that current. And boy, it puts a lot of stress trying to hold that net upright because you want to hold that net up in the water like this and the net bag will extend out. And then the fish will swim into it because as you can see, the chocolate milk of this water, I can't see the fish, they can't see me, and they can't see the net. So here's what it looks like. Dip net in the Copper River, Alaska. She's a beaut. We got Jason Man in the pole here. Oh, you had a bump? Ryan Man in the pole over here. Hopefully we're going to catch something. Just sitting in the sun, waiting for the fish to hit. Hopefully we'll get lucky. So the active part of dip netting is actually kind of boring. You just hold net in the water. And the reason we dip net on the Copper River is you can see how the water looks like chocolate milk. It's just full of silt and it's all glacial silt. And the beauty of it is the fish can't necessarily see the net while they're headed up river. So they'll swim right into your net. And when you feel a bump, you just pull. That is what you call silty water. Now that is going to make a meal. Woohoo! Woo I did not expect the king salmon, I'll tell you that. No, oh, I didn't expect the king salmon either. Alright. Hold gotcha. it up. Woohoo! Yeah. There we go. Nice little king. Just a tiny little thing. Well, as far as kings are concerned, it's not huge, but yeah. That thing's awesome. Now that's fun. Nice. Oh, aren't you guys fancy? See Ryan over there, sitting there waiting for the fish to come. Got Jason hanging out. Come on, fish. See some fish on time. Got a little one? Yep. All right. Tiny compared to that king salmon. <laughs> yeah, it is. Very red nice. salmon. She's pretty. Not a huge one. Actually, kind of a small one, but. Yeah. It'll eat good. It'll eat good. Yeah. Trying to catch fish. 
out here with this. Some fishing, me and Yvonne caught some trout. We're frying it up right here. A little catch clean cook. It's awesome. We already sampled a couple. They are good. Yummy. Yummy. A little asparagus. That's how we get her done, huh, baby? Yeah. Good stuff. What are you sitting on? Tell us. Uh, this is what's called a fish wheel. It's uh, you put it in the river. Probably seen it on other shows, where the water pushes it around and around, and it just keeps on scooping up fish all day long, yep. powered by the water. Yeah. Pretty cool. This one's an oldie. It's alternated from a basket down here to a paddle up there. And so there's two baskets opposite each other, two paddles opposite each other, and the water just works the action, and the fish get caught in the baskets, and then they spill over here, and generally over on this side, there would be a catchment container, and the fish would hit this, the fish come out, hit that slide right there, slide down, Slide down here, and then there'd be some kind of a catchment here, and then, yeah, it's perfect. Drop right in there. So this just, this just sits in the river and fishes for you. Subsistence fishing, it's amazing. Uh, this subsistence fishery, you're allowed 500 fish. 500 fish, that's amazing. Not sure what you do with 500 fish, but they feed whole villages and elderly people that don't uh, aren't able to get out and fish for themselves, and so it's all saved or used. Anyways, we just thought we'd show you guys this kind of piece of history here. It's pretty old. It's been around here in Chitna forever, and it's sitting right on the side of the Copper River. It is absolutely so beautiful here. It is hard to explain the beauty of this river, the just how wild and rugged. This is the Copper River. 
out of Chitna, Alaska. And this river seems like every dip net season, it kills at least one or two people. It is not a river to be trifled with and it provides a lot of food for families all over this state. The salmon we're after are the Copper River Red or the sockeye salmon. And we are allowed to keep one king per permit, one king salmon or Chinook salmon. And uh, the escapement goal that our fish and game has uh, for this river, according to their website, is 350 to 750,000 fish to go up river to spawn to maintain this run. So last year, I think we had uh, 1,030,000 fish go up the river. So it is a massive resource to provide for our families. And it is absolutely gorgeous here. The trail that we ride out to fish on is the, million, they call the Million Dollar Highway. It's an old railroad bed for a railroad that was, uh, there was a big copper mine back in here uh, that produced a ton of copper and they had a railroad tracks back in here. Since then, this has turned into just an ATV trail and has, allows us to access the river down in this big canyon. And that kind of narrows the fish or channels the fish down to a point where it's um, easier to catch. They, they run the shoreline and as you can see from, they run the shoreline as you can see from probably some of the footage that we have or that we're showing you in this, that uh, we're running a 12 foot dip nets but sometimes only six foot sections are being used and you're fishing right next to shore with your net because those salmon are running those slower currents trying to get up river uses as little energy as possible so it's just a fan it is absolutely one of my favorite things to do in alaska and uh, i hope that i'm showing this through this video and giving you an idea of of what this is and just what it entails it's a lot of work it is no doubt a lot of work to come down here loading up the atv uh getting all the equipment that you need to hear and then uh this year the run has been a little bit slower and i've had to stay for a week so this i'm waiting for the second opener that opens at midnight tonight to kind of finish out my uh my permit well it's 9 30 at night and it's at the second opener for the fishery opens at midnight tonight so we've staged up on the river we have our positions and we're just waiting for midnight and we'll start dipping in. we have 18 fish left to get for our limit of 45 fish and we're out of here all right we're back in wasilla and it's time to get these things filleted get them vacuum sealed and get them in the freezer we're just starting to run a little low on fish in our freezer and uh it's gonna be nice to get some fresh salmon in there all right, let's get started. Okay, this fish has not been gutted, so in this case, this is a little different than I normally do, but still it'll work out just the same. Right, there's your filet. There's your filet. Carcass goes down there. Lay the bones out. Okay, there's a filet, nice filet. It's gonna get, because of how I vacuum seal them, I cut them in half. And it's a good portion size for two of us. So that's just how I do it. You can do it however you want.
When you go to the grocery store and you buy your filet, that's pretty much what you're getting, right? I cut it in half, but right there is what you get in the grocery store. Skin's still on. I don't like to skin them because I think cooking them with the skin on holds a little more of the juices in there. So, all right. Now this is one that has been gutted. This is how I normally do my salmon. I'll just split them down the belly and gut them. And then same thing, come across, cut at the head. And I always do the cut through the rib method, which a lot, some people don't. We eat a lot of fish in our diet, and I gotta tell you right now, I don't think there's anything better. This is clean, wholesome living right there. Straight from the ocean into the river, into my net, and right here getting filleted and being put in my freezer. Beautiful part of living in Alaska. Takes a little bit of work. These fish definitely took more work than I've had to do for fish in a long time. I apologize for not getting a video out last week, but uh, I gotta provide for the family and getting this fish was a priority for me. And it took a little longer than expected, so I had to stay in Chitna for an extra week. So I apologize, but I just could not, there was no, um, there's no internet service down there. And there's no way I could have edited a video it wasn't cost effective for me to come home and then go back, so I just decided to stay there. So I apologize for not putting a video out last week, but I hope you understand. And I wish I could send you guys all a piece of this here salmon, but well, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I know some of you out there are probably turning in your seats there, watching me cut the bellies like this. Some people believe that the bellies of the fish are a very tasty, they, and it is a very oily peat part of the fish. A lot of people smoke them because of that, and it turns out a really good smoked fish, but I find that the time it takes to do all that, it just is not worth the effort. I'm looking to get food in the freezer. This is a grocery shop for me, and uh, this is the way I like to do it, so. Well, the next step in the process is I put them down, I want to pat dry the fillets and stick them in these vacuum sealing bags. Put them in the vacuum sealer. And seal it up. I'm using a Backmaster VP215 chamber sealer. It's a vacuum sealer that I've found to be the best. I've used the food savers and I had a an original food saver for years, and it worked. I mean, I have processed more moose, caribou, fish, you name it, with that. But it finally broke, and I upgraded to this. Chamber sealer, the nice thing about the chamber sealer is that you can do liquids, which the uh, other, some of the other brands that are not a chamber sealer uh, pretty much it's impossible to do liquids or it's extremely hard. There you go. That's a beautiful finished filet. Right there. Mmm. Put it in the freezer. I like to stick them in the freezer bags, in the vacuum bags here, and make them look nice, I think. I think, to me, a lot of it is presentation. You put it in there nicely, vacuum seal it down. Look at that, looks awesome. Freeze that up, it's gonna hold for the next year and give us great food.
Now that's a freezer full of good eats right there. All that fish. And then over here we got some more fish. We got some sausages from last year's caribou. And a little bit of Italian sausage. And there's some good stuff in that freezer. That is the finished product of our salmon fishing. So that will be enough salmon for us for the year. And so it's, I gotta get my ass over to Toke and start working on that property. That's where we're headed right now, actually. This is, um, this weekend I headed home just so I get the fish done and then head over to Toke. We're gonna grab the RV and back to Toke we go. I'm gonna park everything there. My tractor that I bought, I've got a backhoe being installed on it. They said it's finished, so I gotta run to Anchorage, pick that up, and then it's load down the trailer, and I'll be headed to Toke with the RV and the tractor and getting stuff done. So, anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. And uh, thanks again. Hopefully, we'll see you on the next one.